<laughs> Hello everyone, what's up? Rob here and I am with Hello, it's me, your boy Eamon And if you haven't guessed from reading the title uh, We're doing something a little bit different today I was going to come up with the name like Monster Movie um, Monthly, maybe, Eamon Oh, that's good, yeah, Monster Movie Monthly, Triple M yeah, Triple M. Um, and basically, you know, this is just something that we're going to trial. There's going to be a few of those different types of episodes over the course of a season. And uh, the idea is basically just to talk about movies featuring either the cryptids that we're talking about or just monster movies in general, or maybe not even monster movies. They might be horror films, you know, whatever. And um, yeah, the first one is, is probably our favorite uh, monster movie. Would that be fair to say, Em? Yeah, yeah, I think this this is certainly even if not the 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 favorite, it's a it's certainly the nostalgic favorite, right? Like the one you remember more than the others. Yeah, definitely. I think if I was to just separate monster quote unquote films in a in a genre, I think this would be my favorite. I don't think there's anything that really trumps it in in that regard, at least in my eyes. Is there anything you can think of? Yeah, I think you're right. Um. Yeah, I think it's it's certainly the the kind of creature or monster movie I've seen more than any other one. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think now. I think do you know what it is? I think maybe it's because I was a little bit let down by the last sequel that oh, maybe yeah. it's tarnished it a little bit. But like you know, all the other ones uh, I, I was a big fan of. Uh, yeah. Um, and before we sink our teeth into the rest Ooh, of no, this, no, we didn't. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'd just like to say uh, our first episode is live, so thanks for the listens, everyone. And also thanks for the feedback. We've had some pretty good feedback, and um, that's that's great. So cheers for that, and continue to um, put out the word and, and let people know about us. And it's at Monster Fuzz Podcast. Um, anywhere that you can follow us, uh, Monster Fuzz Pod on Twitter. And yeah, we hope you like what we're doing so far. Um and is there anything? How's your week been, Eamon? What's the what's the crack? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, I think we might have talked about it on the last one. Uh, we had both kind of broke our legs up with, with jogging. Um, yeah. so we had to kind of give it a give it a give it a rest for a while. So I've been doing a whole lot of cycling. Um, and really enjoying it. I'm actually like I'm not even paying attention to sort of where I'm going, just taking lefts and rights and figuring out where I wound up. Yeah. So. This week, I arrived at a arrived at a, like a church on the outskirts of Ballyhogue in the middle of nowhere, and it just like a view down onto the river and a cemetery. Um, it was actually kind of like picturesque, but also creepy at the same time. Did you get um, spooked? Uh, I didn't stay there long. No, I won't oh. lie to you. Um, but no, it was really it was really nice. Um, and kind of got lost, so I had to use Google Maps to find my way back. Um. <laughs> And then yesterday I went out, cycled out to the beach and it was just totally empty. Like, so I was walking through the forest totally alone and it was really, really nice. Like really, really nice. I like Birds how, were mad loud. I like how you're advertising. <laughs> you're just like going everywhere or knocked out as well. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't know where I live. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> I think... Um, like I, it's like I'm, I'm going around, but like a, it's me and a bike, not stopping or talking to anyone. So I just, I, do you I know picture, what I mean? I picture you with like a fig leaf over your Mickey, going around Carlo <laughs> once picking fucking berries off the yeah. trees. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the kid from uh, the original It movie. Hi ho, <laughs> silver away! <laughs> right around the place. Me little, yeah, yeah. Me little, me little man flapping in the wind. <laughs> Uh, picking elderberries and fucking making poultices out of fucking figs. I'm telling you, the the angel of the slums. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I've been. Uh, I haven't been able to walk. I've literally crippled myself. If any of the listeners know what happens, I don't know what the fuck. I went from running five k three times a week. That was fine. You know, obviously, I was under a little bit of duress as I was running. Didn't really feel anything in my feet. Fine. And then Monday, I had, so I'd taken two days off. Like I, I usually do Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, take the weekend off. Taking the weekend off, feeling good, you know. Uh, Monday comes around, I said, 
I'm going to take a nice chill run. Just uh, I'm not even going to run for like speed. I'm just going to take my time. And I fucking um, about 4k in, I started to feel pain. And uh, I said, you know, it wasn't major. So I was like, oh, it's just whatever. I just kept running. And then yeah. that evening, I couldn't walk. And um, it just, yeah. And, and, and since then, so we're now nearly a full week since that. I have not been able to walk properly on limping around the place. I'm absolutely in bits. Are, are your feet are still gone? Yeah, yeah. Still gone. Mm-hmm. Still limping. Man, yeah. Because uh, my my calf is after recovering so like i'll probably go back at it tomorrow again slow 5k or whatever maybe just four around the block Mm -hmm. but um yeah like it was definitely for a while it was sore but i think you and me are probably both dopes as well like if i start to feel because you always feel a bit of pain and even five Mm -hmm. minutes into the run your body's like i don't want to do this you're like shut up body let's go (laughs) so it's like trying to find that sweet spot where you're like i'm i'm able to do this but then I'll get to the point where like my my leg is in bits and I'm first time I've decided to run 10k and I'm just giving it a go mm-hmm. and you know it's probably time to stop but I just keep pushing until I damage something like an idiot yeah it's very easily done when you're running guys and because listen to us two inexperienced morons that's kind of like basically the best way to go about <laughs> it is like if you if you want to get into running just do less than what we did and start at like two or three k um which you know 5k isn't much but obviously if you if you've just started and you're running it continuously it's probably not the best idea to do um, yeah as we were doing um i also bought um in my weekly news this is the excitement of my week i uh, picked up uh, do you know those um mocha pots have you ever used one of those uh i don't believe i have no so they're the italian it's like a it looks like a kind of a kettle with a handle and it makes coffee you put it on the stove um the the vapor from the bottom chamber um go, rises through the coffee and then it goes into a separate chamber on top of the pot where it fills up with coffee so basically think of a different type of french press type of thing you know okay so i'd say it's a good taste out of it is it yeah it's very nice actually it was super cheap and, and i got some um i got some it, they're really popular in it, in italy they're like a bialetti would be like the, the main sort of brand of those um but i got i got some coffee that was uh roasted in wicklow and it's actually really tasty nice nice You're, yeah i'm drinking in oh, i drink too, far too much coffee these days uh, like especially one, in the morning Mm. yeah yeah it's not a bad idea they're not like the little kettle looking yolks are they yeah yeah kettle type looking thing oh yeah i get you but like it's all silver and you put it on the hob or whatever yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i got you um but they work by a vapor it's like the vapor steam condent or like goes through the coffee and then it collects in like a little spout in the top part and then that spout bubbles over into a a top chamber which is separate from the bottom chamber and that's where the coffee is Mm. So it's, cool. it's a cool method of making coffee, you know? That's nice, yeah. I remember when I used to live in Cork, there was a place there. Um, Jeez, I can't remember the name of it. But uh, they used to have, like, it was, like, science class in secondary school. They had, like, Bunsen burners, and uh, <laughs> they were lighting them, and the coffee was going through some filtration system, and you have a cup of coffee then, and it's like you're on cheap speed for the next two Literally, hours. Man, you know? Even I just had a cup of coffee from from the BLA, and I'm just not used to it, and it was very strong. But um, I just I just mm. had that and seven Jaffa cakes before we started recording. So I, I... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I'm good to go. Um, I, I I'm ready. Seven Jaffa cakes. I'm ready to go, man. You want to see me eating biscuits? I'll fucking put away biscuits. I uh, one night oh. you know the you know the full big packets of digestives. I nearly had a full packet of them in one sitting one night. <laughs> I was getting pains in my gallbladder and everything. <laughs> Man, I tried to do like the opposite the last few days. I was trying to go on um like a keto sort oh, of right, diet. So I was trying to stay away from carbs or have really low carb. And for the first day or two, it was pretty good. And then it was just like my colon was just like, yeah, I'm going out of operation unless you give me some root vegetables or something because <laughs> I I can't I can't process this meat that you're feeding me. Um, um I think so I think I, digestive I, biscuits yeah. are actually keto. <laughs> I didn't think they are. It's not excellent. <laughs> I'd be very surprised. 
<laughs> Organic. I think I'd say they're quite high in carbs. Yeah, I'd say so, probably, yeah. And if, you don't have, if you're American, actually, you probably don't know what a digestive biscuit is. Um, and they are fantastic, and you are missing out. And if you have a, one of those um, import stores close to you, go and get McVitie's uh, digestives, right? I know the Americans won't like it because they like a, they like all mad biscuits, cookies as they call them, and has like all glitter and icing and shit on them. Like they wouldn't wow. like, I don't know. They that'd be more like that's like a it's like a sweet cracker. Oh, you yeah. guys got the sweet digestive <laughs> cracker. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit like a sweet cracker. Um, yeah, yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, they're probably keto. And uh, there was actually on the subject of <laughs> <laughs> on the subject they're probably keto. Yeah, on the subject of American uh, things, I was actually, I had a, a, what you would call, I suppose, a shower thought, and I wanted your um, opinion on it. So I used mm. to do YouTube videos many years ago, and, and I, I, I did like, you know, a lot, like 500 videos. And I used to get comments like, uh, ha ha ha, no, and I'm quoting someone here, so don't, you know, I'm not using foul language i'm quoting a comment and i would say ha 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 you sound retarded because of my irish accent (laughs) 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 so so i thought right when i when i when i was doing youtube i was like okay i need to sort of pronounce things better i need to be more like sort of neutral and i came across there's a few youtubers that are irish that i think are shocking because they are basically trying to sound American to sort of dumb themselves down for that audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really don't dig that. And I think a friend of ours, Gordo, who, who has those conspiracy guys, uh, the conspiracy guy, guys podcast, doesn't do that at all. And I thought that was so cool because not, not remotely. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was fantastic because he has a big audience and he doesn't do that. And I, I think it's important mm-hmm. for Irish people to not feel accent shamed. Um, <laughs> we, we don't sound retarded what do you think about that do you change your pronunciation uh, for anything no 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 like to be fair my accent's probably a little bit more neutral in mm. general than yours you know yeah, um, yeah but but like yeah like like to be honest with you the majority of gordo's fans are american and yeah. like hearing the accent um do you know what i mean i like I like look 10 10 percent of everyone is an asshole. So out of 10 people, you're going to get one that's just going to make fun because your fucking voice doesn't sound exactly like theirs or jeer you because you can't buy slices of pizza at four in the morning <laughs> where you're from. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's just people who are just like crap. They're just not nice people. And you probably just came across one of those in your travels. Oh, plenty. Not just one, plenty. But like, that yeah. was never, it was never something that really concerned me because obviously there's been loads more circumstances where you know your accent works for you like uh even mm-hmm. in ireland people think the wexford accent is very unusual so um that's true actually there's just you're saying it there i, I got a flash back into my brain i was meant to i was meant to tell you this earlier oh. i had a i had a very strange dream um oh. and you were in it oh god was uh, it sex? so did we have sex uh yeah but not with you i don't think i had sex with anyone in it but there was definitely sexual connotations so in the dream right yeah um everything was the same as it was except you had like three sisters or something okay Um, and one was like one was mexican one i think i can't remember i think one was irish or something and one of them had like fake fingers she had like (laughs) she had like no she had like no fingers she had these elastic things that she would like tie fingers to her hand and stuff <laughs> um i think i might have gotten off with her i can't oh, remember nice. but basically so what, what up your the dream, uh, this, i've been feeling uncomfortable and, uh, <laughs> as i was saying i haven't been able to have a good movement in the last few days <laughs> there you go <laughs> but, but, but uh what wound up happening is i wound up getting into like weird situations with every one of your sisters and then they were all like i was like but i didn't do anything with them i don't think i think it was just like you know they're like we should go on a date sometime and i was like yeah yeah but then it happened with all of them and then they all turned turk on me because they they realized that i was like i was like i i did it was like i didn't have the I was like, I didn't want to disappoint any of them. So I was like, just go on a date with all of them. And then you can figure out what's going to be. After. You were being the chad and not the soy boy that you actually are. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe it was a latent chad part of my, my soul. That's just like, you know, you need to spread this around, son. 
um yeah so that was that was my my dream uh it was great it was a bit disconcerting i woke up and i said i won't be drinking gin again for a while and i'm very that. i'm very disappointed that i didn't have any interactions with uh your attractive sisters and that had to be mine but whatever um mm. and also uh <clears throat> we i had a dream before i'll tell our listeners about this i, I definitely told you at the time but you've probably long since forgotten mm. i had a dream with Eamon before that we were in um a swimming pool in like you know sea world or something and there was a manatee swimming around in the in the water <laughs> and we were in the water with the manatee now i actually can't swim in real life so that's a little tidbit for you but in the dream i was swimming and um the manatee was ejaculating everywhere in the water <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we were trying to avoid the cum we were like, ah! yeah, we were like, Ugh! and it was like, you know, in clouds moving towards us. And we we're like, I get out in the fucking, and we get out and like, there'd only be like a little corner of land in the tank. And we'd be going, ah, oh, shit, we're trapped. And uh, yeah, that was the dream. And I still, I still remember that, that, that was dream. dream. It was you about and eight me trying old. to get out of the way of, yeah, you and me trying to get out of the way of manatee come yeah. in a pool with a small <laughs> patch of land i, I don't even I, I don't paging dr freud i don't know i don't, I don't know who, who, what to i actually that would. i actually googled a, uh something about like i sort of dreaming about manatees or something and there was actually an interpretation somewhere but i can't remember what it was this this dream was like i'm talking like eight or nine years ago so mm. you know it was a, it was a long time so ago would have both been in our 20s back then right yeah, so that's enough about um, manatee com and yeah, let's with, get into dinosaurs, fingers and uh, all that stuff. So, what's better than talking about Jurassic Park once, but talking about it two times? We uh, recorded mm. the whole episode and it corrupted. I made the rookie mistake of not having enough <laughs> space, and we lost the entire episode—an hour and a half, sort of, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, we were su- supposed to record a different episode today, um, so we're we're a couple of days pushed back, but we're gonna be fine. And as well, you got all these like gems of us talking about weird dreams with like fingerless sisters and manatee ejaculates. So <laughs> maybe it's been for the best. Yeah, maybe so. So, so Jurassic Park. Um, I think anyone listening, and uh, most of our listeners, if they are in our age group, would uh, appreciate Jurassic Park. I don't think there's many people that like that out outright hate Jurassic Park but um what would be your earliest memory of Jurassic Park when was it when was the first time you seen it where were you who were you with etc etc yeah so um it was in the summer and my mom and dad brought me and my sister to go see it in the old cinema that would have been like um just on the entrance into town there's actually a new cinema there now but yeah it was closed for years afterwards anyway but um yeah we went to see it and my poor little fragile mind was just blown by how cool it was like i i was just it it certainly launched that love for dinosaurs in me um and yeah it and again i, I know we talked about this last time I, I think after that i was i think that dinosaur magazine where you collected the little bones of the skeleton that glowed in the dark mm-hmm. um of the t-rex uh i started collecting that like every second week or whatever it was that it came out um and i was like dino crazy for a long time bought the little raptor figurine for my birthday which was a couple of months later um and yeah just like was blown away by how how cool it looked especially as a kid you know um what yeah. about what about you what's your what's your memory of it i think uh i think yeah for the same kind of experience i was probably about uh five uh we, we were talking about this last time I, I think i was about five you were about nine or something something like around that region. yeah yeah um and yeah, I seen it and immediately I was obsessed. I mean, both of us were in the prime like marketing edge for uh, Jurassic Park, like absolutely. Yeah. And um yeah, I was obsessed. So as soon as I seen it, you know, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I wanted to be Alan Grant. Um, which is also why when Friends came out, I was into Ross because he, he was a paleontologist as well. So Ross was my guy in um Friends back in the day. But um Yeah. It was um yeah it was it was love at first sight really with dinosaurs as uh, it just really resonated with me for some reason or another, um, and I think it resonated with pretty much everyone at age, right? Oh totally yeah I think the other part is like 
kids i mean i I don't know what it's like to be a a little girl but like being a little boy and and like just loving the concept of monsters you know from Mm. a young age um i remember i used to uh, get a book out from the library it was this like yellow book and i think it was just called monsters but it had like stuff about loch ness stuff about like uh grendel uh, was yeah. that from Beowulf or was it a different monster Beowulf? I'm not like, sure. Um, basically, you know, King Kong, all that sort of stuff. And uh, oh man, I was like, I was fascinated. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And um, my grandmother, I remember, you know, I was so young, like I used to sit up on her lap. So I must have been like maybe five or six or something. And she'd just like read the monster books to me. And I'd be like, oh my God, spooky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah so like so when when this movie came out like the only other depictions of dinosaurs i would have seen would have been like what is it uh the land that time forgot like our journey to the center the yeah. ones that had the stop motion dinosaurs in it yeah so like they, this scene like the t-rex at night seeing its eyes dilate under the the flashlight and stuff like i had never seen anything like that before like it was so cool yeah, I think I think that that that's really you sort of hit the nail on the head there. That's really what made the film so good was that for the first time in in pop culture, it, it really gave dinosaurs the uh, love and attention that they deserved to be represented in a film. Mm. Like it made them a real creature, and uh, it allowed them to be like you know, uh, protagonist and antagonist of a film. Um, in a great way, you know, like it, it gave the mm. animals, it gave the dinosaurs a soul. Um, and it, it sort of, as a kid, even sort of uh, tried to get that through to you that like, Oh, the, you know, these are certain animals, you know, these are nice. You're not going to fucking eat you. And, you know, you treat them well, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then there's these guys that you should definitely fear because they'll eat you and they're, they don't give a shit. Um, which I thought was great. It, it, it just, it was, um, it sort of, portrayed them in a very like realistic manner i think yeah absolutely and the uh i think kind of what you were saying there the characters like it wasn't just sort of like a here's fodder for the dinosaurs to chow down on it was um characters that like were good were interesting you know insofar as you can make a character interesting in a kind of a, a creature feature but similar to um like one of my other favorite movies of all time jaws is like you know the, the the shark is there you don't see it very often um when you do it's a little bit of not a letdown but like it's a thing made in the 70s you know mm-hmm. so i think we covered as well talking about the kraken the same guy who made kraken uh in Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea made you were saying about the uh about that what was the point that you were making there before we had our technical difficulties <laughs> yeah i was just saying um you were talking about the the actual screamed screen time the dinosaurs had in the movie yeah uh, if you wanted to just tell people how much like minutes they're actually on screen or whatever uh yeah it, it was something like uh 12 to 15 minutes of actual screen time for the dinosaurs wasn't it yeah yeah exactly so it's like that build up i guess you know like you see the cow going into the raptor pen but you don't see the raptors or they talk about the t-rex but you don't see the t-rex um so it's all that sort of stuff that's done really well builds that tension you know similar to jaws they talk about the shark probably more than you see the shark uh yeah it's it it, it, it builds this ominous like scary atmosphere uh where you know your mind is basically doing more work than anything else because the other thing about Jurassic park actually is uh, they'd never really gone as deep in a film with all the different dinosaur species. So like most people at the time would have been ignorant to say what a Dilophosaurus is or that that is yeah. actually a Brachiosaurus, not a Diplodocus or a Camarasaurus or whatever. And, you know, the, the Gallimimus, they were able to show you what a Gallimimus was. There was, there was plenty of dinosaurs in it that up until then people weren't really familiar with um so that was the other cool thing about it you know that they really expanded on the idea that dinosaurs aren't just camarasaurus or brachiosaurus and t-rex you know yeah absolutely um i think like certainly from the you know from the top of my mind the only ones i can really remember seeing previously that are probably triceratops t-rex and like you know brachiosaurus or brontosaurus or something that looks like that kind of 
LA and Bembe type dinosaur, you know? Yeah, I see I see that um that 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 was just the only dinosaurs that were in pop culture. So Jurassic Park gave the idea, like here's loads more dinosaurs. And to be fair, like there was that many dinosaurs on the planet that you know no film could really get all of them into one. And actually in yeah. a lot of cases there's a lot more like interest and even more weird dinosaurs than what Jurassic Park included. But I think um like I think that was one of my standout things about the film was just that how in depth uh, it went into it. Even if it did get some of the details wrong, which we'll, we'll talk about later, but um, that was one of the things that made the film really good to me. Was there any other standout moments that made the film good to you? Yeah, I think um, I suppose it was really clever to have the two kids as part of the group yeah. going through it because you saw that sort of sense. Like obviously the Anders that the, excuse me, the anim, the actors, the adults have a sense of wonder when they see, you know, um, the dinosaurs for the first time. And, you know, you have that great scene of, uh, um, ne- Sam Neill's character yeah, and Malcolm. Laura Dern's character seeing, seeing the dinosaurs, mm-hmm. you know, but, the the thing about having the two kids is great because it helped i suppose you know people my age people your age to actually have a more of a stake in the movie i suppose something to relate to um for and for a for a kid to have other kids there kind of going around the park it probably made it a bit better for children rather than just having here's a load of paleontologists and a lawyer going around the park you know sure that's a good point actually but did the kids annoy you when you watched that as a kid because i think they might have annoyed me <laughs> i think the girl might have annoyed me at the ki- as a kid but i might have just been at that age like yeah you know yeah, yeah it could have been. <laughs> i was like oh she's always whinging but i mean i'd say you know if girls had cooties and all that sort of stuff yeah uh, when i was that age um and i think actually jurassic park as well might have been a, a sort of an awakening moment for me because i remember seeing laura dern's legs and the oh. cut off jeans and being like there's something there's something about that that seems interesting <laughs> hmm you know so yeah so they're there they're, maybe that's why it's it stood the test of time for me that imprinted dinosaurs and budding sexual <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is that why you <laughs> fantasize about getting four jobs off laura darn now um well i'd say it's not why i don't fantasize <laughs> about that <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, from the film what was your favorite dinosaur Oh god, my favorite dinosaur. Um ah look, I'm going to have to go with the raptor. It's probably a a well-worn choice, but if I'm being honest with myself, yeah, they were they were the ones I thought were the coolest back then. But what about you? What was your your standout? I think I think the raptors were sort of arsehole-y, so I never I loved them. But from a film standpoint, it was always going to be the T-Rex because we have a T-Rex yeah. because he he saves yeah. uh the crowd from, you know, um, certain doom at the hands of the raptors uh, in the sort of battle scene I suppose you could call it at the end of the film which um, which was like a standout moment for me uh, what's your favourite like if you were to talk about moments in the film did you have any particular favourite um, well th- that one where uh, the raptors and the T-Rex fight at the end is obviously really cool Laura Darn um, Outside legs. of that, Lord Darn's legs. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, I'm I'm gonna have to go with the T Rex at night attacking the the Jurassic Park jeeps. Yeah, is probably my favorite one when it breaks through the electric the electric fence. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic scene, and I think what made that really good as yeah. well, folks. Um, so generally at the time, uh, what Jurassic Park did very well was like sort of smoke and mirrors and making like computer generated graphics at the time were very much in their infancy but they managed to use them in, in a sparing sort of way with a very sort of in, in a realistic way to even now like I, last time i watched Jurassic park and i watch it like you know every few years uh i i sort of seen the brachiosaurus at the start uh and it does look a bit dated now but it, it doesn't look, you know, yeah, 30 yeah. years dead or, or whatever. It's, it's coming up to 30 years old now, the film. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't look that bad by any stretch of the imagination. But the great thing was the practical effects. Like they had built a full scale T-Rex that could move. It, it, it 
it was its eyes moved everything about it moved and it was mechanical and i think in films personally practical effects always trump computer effects still to this day yeah yeah 100 percent like um even 100 percent. what else is there lord of the rings is another great example versus the hobbit i think like lord of the rings the original trilogy is fantastic and it's all practical effects for the most part obviously there's some cg in there but there's a lot of cg but there's also a lot of practical effects and then the hobbit man i just did not enjoy those three films at all yeah i mean like if you watch a movie like the thing hmm. and obviously they didn't really have you know cg that you could use back then but the 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 even though it obviously looks fake or whatever, but the thing is awesome. The monster effects on that, yeah. all those prosthetics like that. It's so cool looking. Um, I'm actually just looking here as we're chatting, the the kind of robots, the animatronics they have for the raptors and mm-hmm. the T-Rex. And like, when you look at that T-Rex, man, like even when I'm looking at it now and it's it's a it's a, a, a set shot, you know, yeah. so you can see the, the Jeep, of in the foreground the t-rex a little bit closer to the background and everyone's got their rigs and they're just like doing bits and pieces it looks awesome like you know it's 1993 or whatever like there's no way i can that physical um machine look better than it looks like yeah you know it looks fantastic um there's like Um, a testament so yeah and even the the yeah absolutely like the artistry that went into it um but even that the raptor one is really interesting because that one is uh it's basically like um it's like a cyber raptor is what it looks like because it doesn't have the skin on it okay so they have like you know so they can use the eyes the animatronics all that sort of stuff but uh the actual the way it looks is really cool because it's got this like to describe it so if you think about it's got all these kind of blocky bits on it with circuitry running through it the face is kind of like a it's almost like a gray plastic render Mm -hmm. of the raptor face but there's no detail or teeth in it and uh, you can see the tail has again all these like circuits going around it and little boxes and it looks like a guy has to move it at the same time as well it's got handles on the back but it obviously you know the mouth moves the 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 claws move or whatever but if you just look at that like it it looks so impressive that that's that's what's underneath those those physical um those physical uh robots those physical representations mm. of the of the raptors you know because you do like you say with the the brachiosaurus at the start or the raptors in elements of the kitchen scene mm. when it does go into cg like you, you, your illusion is it's broken you know it yeah. doesn't work as well mm-hmm. uh, as the actual because they did such a good job with the with the animatronics mm-hmm. um did uh adam jones from tool work on jurassic park the guitarist yes yes he did do so there's I, yeah i heard that mm. and that's why a lot of the if you ever watch like any of the tool music videos he uses a lot of those weird like stop motion kind of yeah, okay. gremlin looking things yeah, he's, he's uh, it, yeah, which... you know and so yeah yeah so that's 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 a pretty cool little tidbit, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that people probably didn't realize, especially if you're a Thule fan, but you might have done. But uh, yeah, mm. he did actually work on Jurassic Park. Um, but yeah, I think I think the other great moment actually that we didn't mention is Nedry, the, the, the overweight guy with the, the can of DNA samples. Oh, yeah. um, his, his whole scene with the Dilophosaurus is a fantastic scene. Um, it, it, it's a real it's a real good like sort of struggle scene it's like you kind of almost when he's like trying to get back to the car you can almost feel like the the pain that he's going through to try and get to it and the weather is so terrible and all that yeah. you know he's a great actor oh probably. absolutely yeah very good very good he's such like he's such a, a little shit in the movie <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. but yeah you're right you kind of you want him you want him to get his comeuppance but at the same time you're kind of going like oh lord what's gonna happen here yeah it doesn't it didn't feel um, good as but that yeah not at all but that is that is an interesting one uh because the dilophosaurus could could you tell people like how that was sort of let's say misrepresented in a 
in Jurassic Park. Yeah, the Dilophosaurus saw, for you guys who remember the scene, it's, uh, you know, obviously the frilled dinosaur that, that spits the uh, black venom at Nedry um, to blind him and all that stuff and then kills him. For, for... Every time you say Nedry, I get an image of, like, some actor from fucking Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like, Nedry, and I just see this, this fella from... It's Ned Stark, Joffrey and yeah just someone else kind of that sounds like that too so yeah now you're dead right but uh medry uh you know the the dinosaur looks really cool i think it's probably the coolest looking dinosaur in terms of like it's uh makeup it's very very bizarre looking um but we actually from you know like archaeological and paleontological research or whatever know that the dilophosaurus had no neck frill or venom or a that it's spat venom um so it's kind of you know spielberg took his creative um you know license with that and sort of went away with it but the cool thing is uh about the dilophosaurus is that um it's more or less based on a real life creature so it's the frilled neck lizard so if you guys want to check him out he uh there's actually really funny footage of frilled neck lizards on youtube where they're like chasing people and they have the full frill the neck frill up and like they're running at you <laughs> and their scientific name which is of yeah. note is a uh, chlamydosaurus king which sounds like a oh, nasty gosh. um std perhaps but um we've all been there what about raptors i mean the the most controversial jurassic park uh figure what's the crack with them uh, yeah so the, the raptors despite being very sort of iconic looking mm. um are the wrong size mm. uh they're the wrong sort of the, the the what would you say the texture of their skin is wrong no. um they're yeah unfortunately raptors are basically they would not look the same um and one of the one of the most upsetting parts i think is that scientists nowadays think that raptors were more akin to a kind of a turkey sized yeah. animal rather than the giant six foot predator that you see in a that you see in the movie they're probably very much a predator but yeah just like one that you could kick away into a ditch if a fucking tried to annoy you um if you just like hair yeah. this up but the, the main reason for this like classic gaff, I suppose you could say, in Jurassic Park is simply because Steven Spielberg wanted <coughs> to use the name Velociraptor because it's a cool name that people remember. Everyone mm. remembers Raptor, Velociraptor. So the good news is that there are um, dinosaurs that are the same size as the Velociraptor in the film, and they're just as terrifying. Uh, and Deinonychus is, uh, is one and uh, the other is utah raptor which is in fact i think bigger than the raptors that are in jurassic park as well but i think it's about 10 foot tall which is fairly terrifying yeah you imagine that that's that's like i i would not enjoy that um <laughs> but that that's 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 creepy so i guess yeah it's it's almost like it's similar to what we we've almost said about some other um like actual cryptids we've talked about where they take bits and pieces of different animals and kind of splice them together. I suppose Steven Spielberg's uh, representation of the raptor is kind of, it's taken a name from one and maybe this out of the other, maybe the, the hunting method that the velociraptor may have used or may not have used because uh, there's some, um, some research suggesting that that raptors wouldn't have actually hunted in groups mm. as all of the Jurassic Park movies yeah. seem to depict them as. I know the first one kind of sticks to two raptors yeah. together. Um, when The Lost World comes out, there's that Pikes. really cool scene where they're going through the long grass and you see the raptors kind of in the trail of the raptors behind them. Scene. So there's loads of raptors there, but uh, it's really, really, it's one of the best of that movie, mm -hmm. I think, actually. Mm -hmm um so yeah it's almost as if he decided to take bits and pieces of these diff different characteristics um of maybe raptor type dinosaurs and just create something that you know is now affectionately the iconic uh image we have of the of the velociraptor yeah um what are the other things that would not have lended well to good uh, to a good movie or a good tension scene what was the t-rex having poor eyesight so if you guys remember from the film it was don't move uh, he can't see us if we don't move you know just stay still um they reckon that you know paleontologists re reckon that the t-rex had excellent vision that was similar to a bird of prey so it could spot a field mouse in grass from 60 feet in the air 
And even if you couldn't see it, uh, the heightened sense of smell would find him even in the rain. So the whole scene is basically, you know, just for entertainment. Um, the T-Rex would have um, murdered those guys fairly handy, but it definitely wouldn't have been able to chase the car. So they reckon nowadays that the T-Rex can only get up to about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So you'd probably be goosed if you were running away from him. He'd definitely still catch you. But, uh, well, definitely me with my two broken ankles at the minute. And um, <laughs> he, uh, he definitely wouldn't catch you in a car. So that's the good news. Um, but another thing as well is, like, I don't want it to sound as if we're just, like, picking the film apart because that's not the case. The... Uh, the reality of it is that dinosaur research changes so much, like so often. I mean, even in the last episode or the episode before that, you heard me say that, that you know, the Spinosaurus, uh, that they figured out now that it was basically a water dwelling oh, animal. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it, it, dinosaur stuff sort of shifts that much that you can't really blame um, filmmakers for them being out of date so often. I think. Another common thing is and yeah. the, what you said. I was just saying, like, you also almost shouldn't expect a movie to to be scientifically accurate. I mean, like, if that if Jurassic Park had been scientifically as accurate and up to date as the research had been in nineteen ninety three, it wouldn't have been as as good of a movie. No, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's. Uh, it's there to it's dramatically you know it's like i hate I, I that's one thing that really bugs me when people go see a movie especially comic book stuff and i'm like you i'm a big comic book yeah. guy i've got i don't know how many comics mm-hmm. i have but i think i probably have enough to put a kid through college at oh, this nice, point nice. and um yeah and it, it's like you know like the first spider-man movie where he shoots web out of his wrist instead of the web sling or whatever mm-hmm. and people sort of go mad like that's ah, not accurate to the comic books like yeah but it's not a comic like let it be its own thing let it do what it's got to do you know it doesn't have to be exactly what it is or what it was uh, when it was first created i think i think yeah when when you go into see a movie that is not realistic. You can't put realistic standards, like you can't retrofit your realistic, sta- your standards of realism on a film that is not supposed to be taken as uh, a real thing. Yeah. Like, you know, people say, oh, such and such and such a film, he, he survived all this punishment and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because it's an entertaining film. Like the reality is I can't run 15K a week without having two broken ankles. So, like, you know, if Tom Cruise <laughs> falls off a window ledge 10 foot onto the ground, like, not 10 foot, let's say, let's say 15 foot, he'd probably break his ribs and that would be the end of the film. He wouldn't be able to move. So, <laughs> obviously, they have to, like, realism goes out the window in terms of uh, entertainment, I suppose. Um, there just yeah. has to be a bit of that. It can't, uh, films like that can't, just can't be too realistic. Um of course, yeah. And as well, I mean, you're watching a movie where they've managed to recreate things that have been dead for 65 million years using fucking mosquito DNA and frogs. Like, Dinosaur. come on, people, let's take our heads out of the water here. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dinosaurs. One, uh, one thing that we should mention is, and, and it always gets brought up with, with Jurassic Park, and, and in, a, in a way, I sort of wish that we had like a, like a computer, you know, like with a video game, you get like DLC for a skin like a custom skin. I I wish that we had feathered dinosaur skin for Jurassic Park because uh, Spielberg was actually approached by advisors during during filming and all that under research time that, you know, T-Rex probably had feathers and, you know, some of the other dinosaurs probably had feathers. And we now now know that some dinosaurs definitely had feathers and some definitely didn't. Uh, Some of the sauropods and like triceratops, those guys didn't have feathers at all. And we know that for a fact from skin imprints and things like that but we know that t-rex did have sort of what you would call proto feathers in like a sort of an arrangement Mm -hmm. on his head back and tail um so i think and and raptors most raptors i think were fairly well feathered i think that was uh fairly well known yeah but is that not more terrifying i i think a fucking uh, feathered dinosaur is is way more terrifying than non-feathered what do you reckon than a kind of a reptilian one well i know from looking at the pictures of the t-rex and it had that kind of like mullet Mm -hmm. of feathers Mm -hmm. uh or mohawk of feathers like that looks pretty cool um but i if i'm being honest i like the i like those kind of reptilian lizard 
skins on the dinosaurs. Oh, if I'm being honest, I think they're the ones that I, yeah, yeah. Just I gotta, a... And maybe it's just because they're imprinted on me yeah. from being a kid and watching that movie, you know. There's um, there's a great artist and, and his name escapes me. Uh, if you Google like realistic dinosaur art or something like that, you'll find him. And he he draws dinosaurs with feathers in like the, in the way that you would see like a really good bird portrait nowadays, you know. So he does like the the feathers done really well with like different shadings and things like that, and uh, fantastic representations of them with feathers, and they look just as cool. Also, the interesting thing is we now know from fossils that through I think it's the proteins in the feathers, they're able to tell what color uh, feathers that some dinosaurs have. And um, one actually, I think it was one of the raptors, a micro raptor or something, was entirely black like a, a crow, which I think sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that sounds really, really good. And I, I remember we we talked about this briefly before. Um, I was talking about the kind of oil-like feathers that a starling has, mm-hmm. you know, and it changes from that kind of green to purple as a, as it uh, catches the light differently. And that 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 sort of slick feather raptor i like the look of that like a black slick feathered raptor um i could i could definitely get behind yellow eyes yeah, or some man. shit that'd be scary oh, um, oh gosh and uh there's um they also found uh, some another small dinosaur had like red and black markings on its tail which is a really interesting sort of color scheme but they reckon that they were very colorful a lot of dinosaurs um that, and that they sort of shared a lot of the mating rituals that birds do so it's possible that like a, a t-rex actually did like a mating dance like you'd see some birds do which is kind of crazy that it, yeah i mean like that would be fun to watch what would be really fun to watch it like like so you can imagine like you know from a safe distance sitting there watching the t-rex do its big dance and then this other big massive t-rex coming in and then them having like some sort of t-rex bump uglies session mm-hmm. like i'd say that would be a sight man that was yeah well that's a whole different podcast really if you were to talk about something like that now we could talk about that ad nauseum <laughs> but um, <laughs> no the dinosaur like the 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 thing that i'm disappointed about with the that and I was kind of hoping with the new Jurassic World film and that other shite one, the second one, I, I was hoping that they would address some of that or maybe at least put them in. And I think somewhere along the line they mentioned, oh, uh, the reason that they don't have feathers is because they're using frog DNA. Mm. And, yeah, and I think he said uh, they're bred. Yeah, the what's the 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 Asian woo? doctor? guy's name yeah henry Uh, yeah woo he um henry woo the old hw uh but yeah he's talking about how he's making them as per what the company wants he's like they didn't look like this they didn't have that we're doing this because this is what the public wants this is what you want this is the package we're we're making for them it's what we're marketing it's what we're selling i thought that was a pretty good way of actually clearing that up you know to actually say like yeah look we get it like these aren't the way they used to look but Here's, and it's a good reason. It's a reason that I could see a company following as well, you know? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're trying to make money at the end of the day. So the, the, the real cool thing, actually, I'm just going to insert this little thing in here that people probably don't know. That's actually really funny. Now, just that when you mentioned that, it sort of popped into my head. So Russia is trying to, and I don't know if they're still actually doing it, but they're actually trying to set up a Jurassic Park actively. Um, uh, and what they're doing is they're in the taiga i think it is like that sort of you know permafrosty snowy area they are trying to introduce uh plant life that was native at the time of the last ice age and the reason to do that is because eventually with the ability to clone woolly mammoths they're planning on introducing woolly mammoths into that area wow yeah that's badass do you know what what's terrifying though um more so than actually like you know being able to recreate um dinosaurs and stuff like that is for anybody who's watched um tiger king you know during lockdown Mm -hmm. it will be a catastrophe if people like that manage to get their hands on like raptors and triceratops and all this going around the place like you know just bringing tours into this really dodgily run theme park of dinosaurs um yeah, that that probably wouldn't be ideal. I think our I think our best bet for for that is like I think the realistic expectation is 
dinosaur cloning at least in our lifetime probably will never happen that's uh, they still have a very mm. hard time removing the dna and they can't even get it and when they do it's all fucked up but um mammoth dna however they have preserved and they've been able to get woolly mammoth dna so that's very exciting because if they can get that mm. they could get saber toothed tigers i mean they're pretty cool yeah i like a saber toothed tiger did you ever see that um fully mummified woolly mammoth baby i believe so yeah i believe so but like it has <clears> it's far, been some time yeah it has as far and everything that they found like a fully intact woolly mammoth that was like sort of mummified in the frost and uh they were able to i think extract dna and stuff like that from it too which is pretty cool uh so back to jurassic park what was your favorite characters in the film it had such great characters that was its strong point um, i think yeah yeah I think Laura Dern's legs were my <laughs> first favorite character. Right. Um, uh, no, I, I, I think for me, it's probably going to have to be in the lead is uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm. Oh, okay. Because um, the way, I, I think just Jeff Goldblum and everything is usually really good. Yeah. Um, and then I would have to say, you know, uh, Muldoon is, is the, the hunter is pretty cool. Yeah. And then obviously Alan Grant. But I think as a kid, uh yeah they would have been my three favorites clever girl his uh iconic clever girl his iconic moment he was great yeah Muldoon was the sort of kick-ass like i've i've gone to sort this with british sensibility um i i, I, I <laughs> with a stiff upper lip yeah yeah he's like he's that character like you know you can imagine steven Spielberg. Yeah. like we need a british um now it's probably he probably was in the Michael Crichton book as being maybe he wasn't put in that as being English, but uh, you could definitely see Spielberg lapping something like that up as a, a character like Muldoon. Um, I think my yeah. favorites were Sam. Sam Jackson was great because he perpetually had a cigarette hanging from his mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sam Jackson. Yeah, he was pretty good in it. Uh, he's been in so many films that it's, it's just crazy. I was watching Star Wars, like it's just him as Mace Windu and all that. It's just he's been in all the big trilogies. Like, yeah, hilarious. didn't he say the only way that he would be in a Star Wars movie is if they gave him a purple lightsaber and they're like, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. and that's why he's the only dude in any of those uh, in any of those movies that has a purple lightsaber. I, right? I think I think for him now. Don't quote me. Uh, this is just going on memory, but I think he really wanted to be in a Star Wars film. Um, I think it, I think it was something where he was like, "I'm going to be in one." Uh, so he, um, yeah, he, I think. Uh, but I do think the part of the lightsaber. I think you're right about that. Was definitely a condition yeah. uh, of him being in the film. Nedry is great too, even as an unlikable I, character. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, he's certainly got that kind of comic element. Uh, you know, as well that kind of. It's sort of. Yeah, that comic element that keeps it going, and uh, John Hammond's nice. He's kind of like your granddad who's slowly losing it. Literally, yeah. Um, but I, you know, he's yeah, he's fun as well. Except instead um, of fucking trying to mow the grass, he's uh, unleashing a T Rex on the fucking place or something, you know. <laughs> well, this is it, yeah. Like, granddad, what are you I doing do, in the garden? I do Maybe like as well. <laughs> <laughs> I do like uh, I do like the idea of um of Sam Jackson, like you know. I've been in every other motherfucking movie. I want to be in a Star Wars movie <laughs> with a purple lightsaber. You know, yeah. he's just like, and they're like, yeah, well, we got to let him. We have to. Yeah, sure. He's not. Nah, he's Sam Jackson is the man. I, I will never. He, he is the man. Yeah, I, I would never argue with him being in any film. He's a great actor. A very good actor. No. Um, oh, he's a brilliant actor. My favorite thing, though, like, I love that part in, um, is it Goodfellas? Where he gets like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a casino or good goes, school oh. fellas. He gets shot in the head and then he make, he like hits, he falls down after getting his head blown off and then just goes, Ugh, and he hits the ground, which is fantastic. Yeah, so, it's like one of his first movies, right? Yeah, he was, he was, I think his name was like Stax or something like that or something. And in the yeah. film, I think it's good fellas, Joe Pesci, and uh, someone go to visit him and he they, they basically end up killing him. So he's at the end of the bed tying the shoes. And Joe Pesci pulls out his gun and goes, he'd be late for your own fucking funeral. And shoots him in the back of the head. And he, he flies off the bed, lands on the other bed, and then bounces <laughs> off it and goes, Ugh! after he's been shot in the head. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah, we got, we got good mileage out of that. So that's a little, but I reckon that's an audio <laughs> bug. I don't think that's his Yeah, fault. yeah, I reckon so. Um, but yeah, no, so check, no. check that out, guys, if you... Uh, if you want to want to see Sam Jackson um, t- 
talk from the dead, I suppose, would be the best way to uh, <laughs> to, to class it. But I think I think that's about it for Jurassic Park. I think we've covered it fairly well. Uh, is there anything that you would like to add? Not, not really a whole lot. Um, obviously, it's not, it's not like a super deep dive no. into Jurassic Park and stuff. It's more like just a, you know, maybe other people who have seen it, uh, some stuff they might that might resonate with them. They're like, oh yeah, that's how I felt when I saw it, mm-hmm. or I remember that scene, or whatever. You know, um, kind of fun to to list to paramble through all that sort of stuff. You know, yeah, because like we could literally do with Jurassic Park. I mean, I could talk about five, for five hours about almost every aspect of the film. So like. Like mm. I could pick up the dinosaur segment and I could talk for five hours about that. I could pick up the feckin characters and talk for five hours about them. So we were trying to find a balance mm. or even the format. setting, the, yeah. Yeah. the flora. Yeah. You know, like you could, there's so much stuff in it. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a great movie and it still does hold up uh, remarkably well, better than either of the, the two sequels that have come out in, in recent times, I would argue. Oh, absolutely. And it's definitely, I think in my top five all time, I think I have to say yes yes i think it's definitely yes. there uh so yeah guys thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed this little uh walk down memory lane um over the hills and far away into the land of the fucking <laughs> uh late cretaceous and uh yeah um please uh if you, if you did enjoy um share the episode let people know that we're out there and uh, as always it is much appreciated and uh yeah so it's bye from me and and by from me um hopefully we have that uh that uh intro ah yeah alive and kicking at the start of the episode now so uh if you like that if you don't like it let us know if you want something different uh we're itchy to change um we'll try to stick it up on uh on on a uh, youtube and do some other stuff with that as well mm-hmm. but i am kind of hoping maybe down in future episodes i might do a little jingle for each one you know but we'll see how we are time permitting and stuff like that yeah well that's it yeah for sure we, maybe we'll be able to retroactively do that as well as a sort of thing but we'll see or yeah. or we could maybe write like an ep of accompanying music or something <laughs> yeah to bring you through to come on the journey with us as we talk about all mm. kinds of ill shit yeah there's you know we're creative individuals there's plenty of uh things that we could do for sure so yeah watch the space guys thanks for watching see you later mm.